This is KGW News at Sunrise. Portland's mayor stepping into the fray, wading into the crowd of hundreds of protesters last night as the city, state and nation watch what happens here in Oregon. He said he was there to listen and to condemn the actions of federal officers. COVID-19 cases in Oregon show no sign of slowing down. And Governor Kate Brown is taking more action. We will look at the new rules, particularly when it comes to masks and kids. A lot of teachers are rewriting their wills. Um, this is a very serious thing. Wow, Oregon teachers say returning to classrooms is literally a choice of life and death. What they want to see happen before schools reopen. Good morning to you on this Thursday. Thank you for waking up with us. Boy, it is already a busy morning. Yeah, it sure is. A lot happened overnight after another night of protesting. So we want to catch you up right now. The big headline to tell you about Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler getting caught up in tear gas and flashbang munitions as he witnesses demonstrations in front of the federal courthouse downtown. Security just whisk him away but not before he spent hours listening, talking, and at times getting heckled by that crowd. It has now been more than 50 days of protesting here in Portland, and this is the first time the mayor has seen it in person. Yep, he talked to people and at times faced pointed criticism and took a stand against the presence of federal officers and their tactics. Here's Mike Benner with more. We are on the front line here in some might call it a monumental moment. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler meeting with protesters downtown Wednesday night. Well, I want to thank the tens of thousands of Portlanders who've come out to demonstrate in support of racial justice and equity. The mayor acknowledged how the demonstrations have shifted towards the presence of the federal police in the Rose City, something he does not support in the least. It is an unconstitutional occupation. The tactics that are being used by our federal officers are abhorrent. They do not act with probable cause. Mayor Wheeler got an up-close look at the Fed's actions. After spending well over an hour speaking with demonstrators, the mayor stood along the fence that surrounded the federal courthouse. Fireworks were shot at the building, and federal police responded by deploying tear gas. Mayor Wheeler got a taste of it telling the New York Times he saw nothing that provoked the response, adding that it was an egregious overreaction and urban warfare. I think he's genuinely not a good mayor. Count Danielle James among the protesters who weren't happy to see the mayor and glad to see him eventually whisked away by security shortly before midnight. Will he return in the days ahead? That's unclear. What is clear is that these nightly demonstrations are showing no signs of letting up anytime soon. We could be out here the next 60 days or the next 600 days. In Port, Mike Benner for KGW News. So the mayor stayed at the protests until around midnight, but the protesters stayed longer. No, uh, Portland police did declare a riot. They said people lit multiple fires and threw things like Molotov cocktails at the courthouse. Portland police say they didn't make any arrests, but we don't know if federal officers did. A U.S. district judge is getting ready to decide on a case involving the federal officers in Portland. Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum filed the suit, arguing the officers are using unlawful tactics. It's one of several lawsuits now headed to the courts. The state AG is seeking a temporary restraining order to restrict federal law enforcement in Portland. This is all after allegations they were using unmarked vans to arrest protesters without probable cause. Rosenblum is asking the judge to require federal officers to tell protesters who they are, why they're being arrested, and have probable cause to do so. Another lawsuit focuses on the treatment of several people who were acting as medics for protesters. They are suing both the city of Portland and the Department of Homeland Security, claiming they were specifically targeted. Now, we heard from several of them yesterday. One is an OHSU graduate student and volunteer medic. He says police targeted him during a protest in June while he was trying to pack up a medical tent and leave. They told us to leave our, our supplies and to go away. I was filming the officers and I looked over my shoulder to make sure that the, my fellow volunteers were retreating. They were, and I began to back away from the officers as well uh, while filming them. 
I, uh, then a passing police officer pointed at me and said, arrest that guy. And that's what it takes to get arrested in Portland. Police are also accused of attacking medics with rubber bullets, tear gas, and flashbangs. Well, you know, we have been following these demonstrations for over eight weeks now. We have all of our reports on our KGW YouTube page, and there's now a dedicated playlist to our coverage of these protests with more than 160 videos. Portland police released frightening video of a man assaulting several people with a handsaw. Officers arrested Shane Green after he assaulted two people inside this laundromat. It happened last week in the Sullivan's Gulch neighborhood of Northeast Portland. Police say he also broke windshields on several cars and threatened even more people outside. Turning now to the coronavirus, Oregon reported 264 cases yesterday. So almost half of our 15,000 total cases have been reported just this month. And because of that, Governor Kate Brown is issuing some new restrictions. Restaurants and bars and churches and other venues now have to limit gatherings to 100 people. It used to be 250 for counties in phase two. Governor Brown also considering putting limits on tourism or requiring mandatory quarantine for people coming here from COVID hotspots. Masks are also required now in gyms, even if you're doing intense exercise. The governor also lowered the age limit for children wearing masks in public. It now applies to kids five years old and up. Well, these new restrictions begin tomorrow. For a closer look at that, especially concerning the children and the masks, here's our Katherine Cook. We must scale back, limit our interactions, take more precautions. On Wednesday, Oregon Governor Kate Brown changed the state's rules and guidelines around COVID-19. One of those changes involves kids. Children under 12 were not required to wear masks in public, but beginning Friday, that will change. If your child is five or older, you will need to help them wear a face covering to protect themselves and others. The state is also keeping its recommendation, not requirement, for kids ages two to five to cover their faces. We really have to be cautious. Uriah McClendon is doing her best with her little boy, Sire. He's three, so, and trying to get him to wear a mask is pretty difficult. Um, it's difficult as an adult, sir keep the mask where he needs to be. <laughs> Sire seemed willing to try. We asked him what's cool about having a mask. Um, just wearing it. I doubt they'll keep it on. I mean, our daughter's only three, but she constantly goes like this. Hi. So I, I don't know if uh, it will work. Clearly, getting younger kids to wear a mask is a big ask for a lot of parents. So state health officials offered some suggestions like letting your child choose and decorate their mask, trying different styles to see which is most comfortable, putting a mask on a favorite stuffed toy or drawing one on a book character, introducing the mask when everyone is relaxed but not too sleepy, pointing out other people wearing masks while you're out. And remember, kids are quick learners. They really are. Madeline Allen is a teacher at Marysville K-8 school in Southeast Portland. She says parents should not wait to teach their kids about wearing masks. Parents should definitely start now um, getting their kids familiar with, with wearing masks. Um, you know, start with 15 to 20 minutes and then just build up um, incrementally from there. Madeline believes the mask mandate for kids is a good start, but she says the way things stand, it's not enough to ensure a safe in-person learning environment. There is no acceptable number of, of teachers or students getting sick with COVID at school that would make reopening worth it. For now, parents like Uriah will keep doing their best to follow the rules, old and new. <laughs> well, I don't really know uh, if it's going to work, but I, I bet that it's, it's going to help. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Boy, as we said, it has been a busy morning. We'll have more on all that, but we do want to turn to weather for a second. Step outside on your Thursday morning or Friday Eve, as I like to call it sometime. Wow, that is a cloudy view from our Wells Fargo sky cam. Joe kind of reminds me of yesterday, but the sun eventually came out.
Exactly right. And that sun is going to be popping again later on this afternoon, and it's going to be kind of the similar setup the rest of the work week, waking up to morning clouds, followed by afternoon sunshine. Temperatures, Brenda, though, are going to be a little bit cooler uh, for this time of year, getting into the mid to the upper 70s. So throughout the morning, we'll be looking at a temperature of 62 degrees by lunchtime, 68 daytime highs in the metro area, mid to the upper 70s. As you travel south of the city, you'll be seeing temperatures closer to 80 degrees, picking up a little bit of some showers along the east side of the state. We we still have that red flag warning in place uh, throughout the southeastern side of Oregon because of the fire danger uh, potential of seeing some thunderstorms develop. That's the only place that could be seeing some active weather here this afternoon. Other than that, we're going to be seeing really pleasant and calm conditions heading into your Thursday. Temperatures throughout the morning, though, will be in the low 60s. But as we head into later part of the day, right around 70 degrees by late morning, early part of the afternoon. And you'll notice temperatures right around 80 degrees throughout the central and southern part of the Lamette Valley. East side of the state will be right around the low to mid 80s and then uh, heading into the evening hours. Very pleasant along the east side of the Cascades, right around upper 70s, about 80 degrees by 730, 8 o'clock tonight. Meanwhile, throughout the metro area, you're still going to be seeing a little bit more of the clear skies uh, later on tonight with temperatures by 8, 9 o'clock, right around the upper 60s to low 70s. Or I should say the mid to the upper 60s. Daytime high tomorrow of 75. And then we start to see our temperatures warm up, especially for the weekend, the early part of next week. Could be seeing our warmest day so far this summer by the early part of next week. Brenda? All right, thank you so much. Wow, that's a scorcher there. 90s. All right, coming up, Oregon teachers make a specific demand on what they want to see happen with the pandemic before they are willing to get back in the classroom. And then later, you guys have probably seen these face masks, the ones that have a valve right on the front. The question is, do they work? Our Verify team looks into it.